two diagrams that I use to find the foci and the directrices directly contradict one another. So that's a recipe for confusing yourself if you kind of slam them together. Okay? So I'm going to do one for the foci, which are more straightforward, and then another one for the directrices. Okay? Now, the foci first, we know roughly, according to what we did before, we know roughly where they are. It's somewhere uh, roughly we expect it to be there. Right? It should be about 1.4 times further from the origin than the vertex right there. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to take advantage of that. Right? Knowing that, and I've drawn in green the transverse axis to help us with the geometry of it, knowing that the focus should lie on the transverse axis, I mean, that's part of what makes it the transverse axis, I can draw <coughs> up a line like so, right? and that distance, which I've just drawn on that interval, because it's from this hyperbola, right? It should by, be identical to this distance. Do you agree with that? Right? Those two distances are the same. So I know what that distance is. It's root 2 times a. Now, to find where the focus is, all I need is the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. Well, the x-coordinate is this distance here across, and the y-coordinate is this distance here downwards, okay? And because it's the x and y, I've got a right angle there. But the beautiful thing about this is the fact that I know that because this point is on the transverse axis, y and x should be the same number. Do you agree with that? Like the same value? So if I call this x, then that means this also must be x. Right? Do you agree with that? So now I turned this, whoa, conic fancy. I turned it into a Pythagorean triangle. Okay? So by Pythagoras, in that black triangle, I can say x squared plus x squared equals root 2a all squared. Right, that's the hypotenuse. And it kind of falls out from here what the x value is. I've got 2x squared equals 2a squared. Yep. Divide through. And I get this familiar value. Now, for us, that might be like, wait, what? How does that work? Because x equals plus or minus a was significant to us before, but for a different reason. It's where the vertices were. Do you see that? But when I've rotated around, right, this distance here has preserved, but it's no longer horizontally at the same point. Okay? So now the focus is at, well, one of them will be at a comma a, because the x and y are the same, and the other one will be over here at minus a minus a. So that's the focus. Thumbs up. Okay. Now I'm going to pull much the same trick to work out the directrices. Okay? First I'll do one directrix, and then the other one just kind of comes along for the right. I know, again, from my rough plotting out and looking at my original hyperbola, that my directrix should be here, closer to the origin than the vertex that it corresponds to. Okay? So something like this. Ish. Okay? Now, um, like I said, I'm going to take advantage of, number one, the transverse axis, and number two, the fact that I know along the transverse axis exactly how far away the directrix should be. It corresponds to that interval there. You see that? That interval, it corresponds to this interval. And I know its exact length. It's a on root 2. Okay. So in there, I write a on root 2. Now from there, I've got a couple of different paths I could take. Okay. Um, I could do like perpendicular distance formula, because I've got the orange there with gradient, etc. But to me, I might as well just use the approach I used before. If I know a point on this line, I already know its gradient. We already established that before. So then I can just put it to point gradient. So you write angular triangle for exactly the same reason because that point is on the transverse axis. It's not only a right angular triangle, but it's isosceles. So now I go again. x squared plus x squared. Note, it's a different x, obviously, because it's a different spot, is equal to a on root 2 all squared. Okay? So it looks to me like 2x squared and a, a squared on 2. Happy with that so far? But here, instead of the twos just cantering out, here, it makes it worse. So I get x squared on 4. So when I go and take the square root, I'm getting half that distance. Does that make sense? But that should make sense, right? Because look, the directrix is so much closer than the focus. In fact, it's exactly half. Now, how do I use this? What do I do with this thing? You can go a on, equals a on 2, a on 2. Yeah, so now I know the coordinates of that point. It's a on 2, a on 2. So I'm going to put that into point intercept. Sorry, uh, gradient, point gradient form, right? So I've got y minus the y coordinate equals 
and I know what the gradient is, it's minus 1, so minus x minus x1. There it is, okay? And it's beautiful, it just pops out like this, minus x plus a on 2 plus a on 2. So y equals that guy, right? And of course, I've got its cousin, which is going the other way, so I guess I would have um, minus x minus a, I guess, to take advantage of the symmetry. Okay. 